I'm sorry. I was staring at you, wasn't I? I didn't mean to, really. It's only because... because you look so much like my father. When he was younger, of course, your age. A most remarkable resemblance. So 1945 technical and noir psychological thriller Leave Her to Heaven is, on the surface, the story of a jealous woman who casually lays waste to anyone and everything that gets in the way of her and her perfect life with her new husband. But as we'll see over the next several minutes, it's actually one of the most complex, cunning and out and out scary films to come out of 40s Hollywood and still features subject matter that would be pretty taboo in a film if it was released now. Here we have the gorgeous Jean Tierney, who does one of cinema's great about turns, uh, going from playing the ever so innocent titular character in the previous year's Laura to conjuring up one of cinema's most heinous villains. Let's take a look. So Leave It to Heaven is director John M. Stahl's lurid adaptation of Ben Ames Williams' best-selling novel. Here Jean Tierney plays Ellen Berendt, who, fresh from mourning her dead father, ends up marrying a man who looks exactly like him. Author Richard Harland, played by Cornell Wilde. Stunned by her beauty, he of course falls for her immediately, um, accepts her proposal of marriage, thinks he's going to live happily ever after, and has no idea of the insanity he's about to be drawn into. Now, Leave It to Heaven is infamous, really, for two particularly unnerving sequences that still manage to shock now. Uh, the classic one involves a disabled boy in a lake, and the other, chillingly, an unborn baby in a flight of stairs. Now, we'll get back to these in a few moments. Now, look here, Ellen. Darling, will you marry me? Why, you unpredictable little... M but first, let's take a sneak peek at the film's central love story between Tierney and Wilde. So the pair meet on a train where Tierney's Ellen can't take her eyes off the author. Uh, the pair get chatting, and before you can say fatal attraction, they're in the throes of a romance. Now, alarm bells should have rang the moment he witnesses his future wife scatter her late father's ashes in a less than subtle manner across the Arizona countryside. Now, there's an alternate reality version of this movie where the pair marry, settle down and live the good life. But the problem Ellen has is that there are other people in her new husband's life already uh, that she simply refuses to share him with. One being his disabled younger brother, Danny, played by Daryl Hickman, and her own half-sister, Ruth. Now, just quickly, poor Daryl Hickman sticks out like a bit of a sore thumb here. Even in the middle of a technical and melodrama, his gee whiz or shucks line delivery is a bit eye-rolling. I don't know, did kids speak like that in the 40s? Maybe. Hello? Oh, golly, Ellen. We're going to back of the moon. Yes, Ellen? When? Tomorrow? Oh, gosh. Yeah? Gee, thanks, Ellen. Gosh. That being said, her husband has obviously a close relationship with his younger brother, uh, which causes Ellen's frustrations to build. Dick! Danny. Danny. Now we can, all three of us, go to back of the moon. Can't we, Dick? Can't we? You bet we can. You bet we can. <laughs> um, along with the film's tension, climaxing, to begin with, an innocent swimming session that takes the most sinister of turns. I, I think I'm getting tired. Take it easy. You don't want to give up when you've come so far. Now, Jean Tierney is excellent in scenes like this. Uh, the role earned her an Oscar nomination and she does a great job of letting her initial happiness sour as she becomes increasingly jealous of anyone who encroaches on her life and she attempts to control her new husband and those around him. Now, I'm more familiar with Tierney's early 50s film noir crime thrillers like Night in the City, um, Whirlpool and Where the Sidewalk Ends. So when I finally got around to watching Leave Her to Heaven, it was quite jarring to see Tierney in vibrant colours. But despite that, this is still a film noir at heart with the awful things Tierney does even more shocking for being set in broad daylight. Now, the rest of the cast are fine. Uh, Cornell Wilde, who's a bit of a forgotten actor, bless him, um, as Ellen's husband, doesn't have a massive amount to stretch him here. He, along with everyone else, gets swept up in Tierney's whirlwind. He's probably at his most effective in the quieter moments where he realises the true extent of his wife's twisted behaviour. Don't, Richard. Don't. Was that why you killed him? I didn't mean to let him drown. But you did, didn't you? You're a perfect swimmer, and the boat was so far away, and he was going down for the third time. 
You killed him. You let Danny drown, didn't you? Didn't you? Yes. Yes, I did. I let him drown, and I'd do it again. I didn't want him around. I didn't want anyone but you. Yeah. Culminating in a chilling moment when she decides not even her unborn child will get in the way of her happiness. Now, the only thing I'm personally not a huge fan of is the way the film delivers a bit of a clumsy and anticlimactic courtroom sequence in its third act. It's a bit of a dud finale, but it does come after a devilish late twist that I won't spoil here. It is partially rescued by featuring Tierney's Laura co-star Vincent Price um, as a fiery prosecuting attorney, uh, but can stretch a little bit too long. You've dodged long enough. You can answer a simple question, and I demand that you do so. Just when did you fall in love with Richard Harland? Did you love him after his brother Danny was drowned? Did you love him after the death of his stillborn child, after his wife died? Did you love him last week, a month before, a year before? Are you in love with him today? So Leave It to Heaven is told in an effective flashback style that tells us from the start that something isn't going to be quite right uh, and does a great job of offering up plenty of surprises along the way. So nominated for four Academy Awards, Leave It to Heaven won for Leon Shamroy's excellent colour cinematography. Um, and to be honest, the look of the movie is actually sat just behind Tierney as the second best aspect of the film. Um, it sounds cliched, but the colours genuinely leap off the screen. Uh, whether it's lipstick, costumes, uh, some of the on-location shots, the list of amazing scenes is pretty huge. Um, modern audiences might find it looking a little too artificial, but this is the top tier of technical movies. So Tierney's character, despite being a jealous and spiteful monster most of the time, um, you still can't actually take your eyes off her when she's up on screen. Uh, maybe the film wouldn't have been as great without her in it. In fact, I'm sure it wouldn't be. Uh, the psychology behind her behaviour is fascinatingly dark, even now, and I can't imagine how its themes of murder, blackmail and abortion played in 1945. Tierney's dark-hearted wife laying out a path for generations of soap opera villainesses. Go check it out. Oh, don't you see, Richard? I didn't want anyone around, only you. I wanted to be just with you. I couldn't stand having anyone between us. Oh, I love you so, Richard. I love you so. 